Eric, why did you decide to write a book about nuclear weapons? I heard the story of this weapons accident in Damascus, Arkansas that occurred in September 1980. And I thought it was an amazing story. And the more I learned about it, uh, the more I learned about safety issues with American nuclear weapons. So it started out to be a relatively brief book about this one nuclear weapons accident, it became a much bigger book about other accidents and about the management of the American arsenal. What did you discover after you'd researched the book? I discovered that our nuclear weapons from the very beginning of the atomic age uh, were much less under control than the government had led the American people to believe. And by that I mean there were many more accidents. There were numerous near misses in which we could have had American weapons accidentally detonating on American soil. And there was also a constant threat of uh, weapons being stolen, weapons being used uh, by unauthorized personnel. And the management of the arsenal was just an extraordinary challenge from the moment it was created to the present day. In Command and Control, you described some very serious incidents and near misses involving nuclear weapons, which took place during the Cold War. How serious do you think the risk of a nuclear accident is today? There's still the risk. Uh, the weapons today have much better safety mechanisms now than they did during the 70s and 80s and even in the early 1990s. And one of the themes of the book is the effort to improve nuclear weapon safety. But the weapon systems themselves uh, still are dangerous, particularly in the United States where many of our weapon systems are aging. Uh, the B-52 bomber, which is our principal nuclear bomber, hasn't been built since the Kennedy administration. So those bombers are 50, sometimes even 60 years old. Our, our uh, Minuteman III missiles were first deployed in the early 1970s. They're now getting on to be 40 years old. These are very complex technological systems. So whereas I think the risk of an accident is lower today than it was during the height of the Cold War, uh, the risk is not zero. And these machines, these nuclear weapons, are inherently dangerous machines and have to be handled very, very cautiously. Your book concentrates on accidents involving the USA's nuclear weapons. Uh, how do you think the USA's nuclear safety record compares with that of the other nuclear armed states? Well, I don't want to be overly jingoistic and chauvinistic, but I do believe the United States invented this technology, has probably more experience with this technology than any other country, and I think we probably build the safest nuclear weapons in the world. And if we've had this many problems with our arsenal, it should really be a cautionary tale to any other country that's considering having nuclear weapons. When you think about countries like Pakistan and India and Russia, and even just look at their rate of industrial accidents, I think that gives a rough measure of their ability to manage complex technological systems. And uh, I'm concerned about the nuclear weapon safety issues in those countries. What steps do you think we need to take to prevent the risk of an accident involving a nuclear weapon in future? Just the laws of probability would dictate the fewer weapons, the less likely there is to be an accident. Fewer countries having nuclear weapons, the less likely that are, there would be to be an accident or loss of control by one of those countries. And for those nations that have nuclear weapons, there has to be constant vigilance and investment, not necessarily in building new weapons, but in how they're maintained, how the people who handle them are trained. And there's just no no margin for error with this technology. Eric Schlosser, thank you very much. Thank you.